Between the Tambers and the Gars, the U.S. Navy started the best class of submarine to serve in any Navy during World War II. Nah, just kidding. Actually, they started Mackerel. Though others were involved, these two were essentially the fault of Admiral Thomas C. Hart. Hart was concerned that American subs were getting too good. I am not kidding. Specifically, his concern was that subs were getting so large that when war spread to the U.S., it wouldn't be able to build enough of the newer large subs fast enough to meet the demand. So on March 31, 1941, the Navy commissioned the 825 surfaced and 1,190 submerged ton mackerel. Being about the same size and weight as the later boats in the S-Class of 20 years prior, obviously something had to give in comparison to modern subs, which were almost twice the weight. Actually, a lot had to give, mostly in the engine room. Only two engines could be fitted, half the number in the timbers, and the standard practice of electric drive was dropped as she reverted to direct drive. Similarly, only two motors could be fitted for submerged propulsion, half the number in the timbers. Just to make it a foobar hat trick, the number of cells in both battery groups was cut in half from 126 to 60. Weapons weren't spared either. The number of torpedoes carried was cut in half from 24 to 12. The number of forward tubes was reduced from 6 to 4. The number of rear tubes was halved from 4 to 2. Incredibly, the Mark III TDC was dropped in favor of the Ford-built Mark II TDC. These were the only subs fitted with the Mark II, and I'll let you imagine the maintenance and training headache associated with supporting only two of these complex machines. Sensors also got the axe. Rather than fitting the usual JP or JT series sonars and QCJK pair, they only received the passive JK sonar. This means they had no active sonar, which made submerged range finding impossible, even if it had been desirable. Then, just for laughs, four months later, on August 1, 1941, a near sister, Marlin, was commissioned. At 800 surfaced and 1,165 submerged tons, she was even smaller and had most of the same characteristics. The only major difference was that her engines switched from direct to electric drive. The underlying concern about construction rate was moot. By the end of the war, the U.S. was churning out the larger, more capable subs by the score. In fact, near the end of the war, many under construction were even being canceled as being superfluous. If you guess these two were only suitable for training out of New London along the East Coast during the entire war, step forward to collect your no prize. Both were decommissioned right after the war on November 9, 1945, having served only four years. Main armament was, you know, I'm not even going to waste any more time here. On to the Gatos.